Hey everybody, <laughs> Siliano in his jungle gym. Oh, sorry for anybody wearing headphones. It is his afternoon and finally we can have him in the jungle gym and he seems to approve now that he got used to the camera. Right at the beginning, he was not too pleased with me approaching him with the camera, but now uh, it's all about, look at me, look at me. <laughs> It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. Apologies in advance for the background noise because I am on an open mic and well, I'm on my gimbal. So what we're going to do today is enjoy the fruits of the labor of just having cleaned the patio for the first time, giving it a good hose down after the winter months, which I have not been doing. I've let the rain do its thing. Anyway, so we're on the east side. This is Maxillaria tenifolia. There will be no buds on this until later in the year. Hopefully, we'll get a good blooming out of her. But what is very special about this table right now is my little compote pot of <laughs> Platea striatas. Here's the Ibo striata in bud, and that would be Baloo barking on me. Apologies for that. Yeah, I'm going to stop apologizing. And Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents gave me these platillas. They are a journey of discovery for me. And I just want to show you something after I posted for the St. Patrick's Day. I said I had two buds on the variegated, the Albo striata. And look at this. This I'm seeing for the first time right now with you. I have a bud on the striata, the regular form. This would be a first time blooming. They were up against the hedge, but I took them away because I've had some buds chomped away from my Cooksonianum where these guys were living as well. And I thought, oh, hell no, <laughs> that's not happening. So hopefully on the patio, we are soon going to see Letia striata blooms. Wouldn't that be just the coolest ever? Very, very happy to discover this with you today. Where there's one, maybe we'll get another one because look at the size of the growth. I have never had such strong growth from these since I received them two years ago. Anywho, moving on, we've just had a beautiful little color scheme of Ciliano in pink and white. Here is my Cymbidium looking very, very beautiful. And one of the blooms lost the pollenum, but it's not collapsing, so I guess it's not going to be a seed pod but you can see the difference in the lip. There is no pollen in there, so the lip has gone a beautiful crimson color, whereas here, everything is intact, pollen still intact, and the lip is still white. Very happy that they don't have botrytis. I didn't have to remove them prematurely. My Phaeus is looking a shambles. Oh well, nothing new about that, but we still have the spike. So if you'd like to join me for a little mosey along the patio, we saw a quick update on my Tolumnia here. This is my rock down to Tolumnia Avenue. 
Look at that. Yes. Okay. Now, I am not too convinced about many of my tulumnias surviving, but as the temperatures are warming up and they don't have to tolerate such low temperatures even indoors, I have a feeling I'm seeing tulumnias greening up as opposed to being this dark, dark burgundy. So you see, I didn't peel anything off of this area right here, but it's going greener. And that is a good sign, as is this new growth right here is looking a bit greener. <laughs> anyway, enough of the tulumnias because we can mosey on to my gorgeous Colmenara Maasai Red right here. And I think you can see from this angle how many blooms there are and how the sun has a certain intensity to it already because the lower blooms, all the lip has faded. And that is not play on light. That is exactly what they look like. Faded lips. In comparison to, maybe that light is a bit harsh. Hang on a second. There we go. Faded lip. Sorry about that. And then we get to the lips that still look rich and beautiful. A magnificent orchid wouldn't be without her. We had a look-see at all the Rapiculus Lelias recently. My Kautskiana big one, I did not mention in that video that the new growth there, it has a sheath. Whether anything is going to come of it, I do not know, but they're acclimating nicely in a little bit more of an exposed environment. My Victoria Regina up here is also doing beautifully. I would like the moss to recover, come back, grow again. Oh well, probably didn't appreciate the nasty cold temperatures either, even though the orchid is doing fine. We've got the nice new growth. All the growing points are intact, keeping an eye on her. Just because up against the hedge, you know. <laughs> Hanging out is my basket of loose neary. Everything's okay. I have put the van der Rack, I'm still calling it that, hard habit to break, even though now it's probably more of a vandacious rack, not my vandas anymore. But I put it up against the hedge because of the shadow line. Just getting them used to higher light, and I don't want to be burning anything. They've been in direct sun, but that is when there's a breeze going, which is cooling them down. I have no breeze today, and it's been a beautiful, sparkly day in southern Spain on the patio. Maybe you can hear some birds chirping in the background, and that can rise above the cacophony of Ciliano as well. I'm going to try and block out as much of the other audio as I possibly can. There's not so nice clanging of the gate stuff. So we're starting to get some freckles here. It's great. And then here we have the other, my weirdest orchid, my other Neostylus Lucineri Blue. Oh, I wanted to show you while we still have her somewhat in dormancy, I would say that my Neo Phoenicia falcata, yeah, she's still dormant. The leaves are still dull. Unless on the road to discovery, you and I discover some kind of a root cracking open, showing the first sign of it coming out of dormancy, but no. So I put her a little bit more into a protected space because all this reddening is not from excessive light, that is from cold damage. But no, she's still fast asleep, which is fine. I missed her every single day, just lightly. I've given her some seaweed and some cow mag in the recent weeks, just to say, you know, I'm here, I see you, I know you're ready to come out of dormancy and we'll have you nice and ready to go. Back to my Kimberlianum here, doing fantastic. The roots are also starting to activate again. There was a moment where they were dormant, but nope, nicely starting to grow again. I lost a lot of leaves though on the right side here. I wonder if you can see that. All the right side here, all the leaves dropped off. I'm hoping everything is in focus as it should be. Is a drinker, starting to drink even more now, but yes, this is a good sign. Whatever happened with all the leaf drop, you see here's a red one, it's not ready to come off. Whatever happened with all of that, at least the root tips are growing again, so she's not lost. Stan the man, chilling in the corner here. 
not putting him in direct sun anymore because the sun is that much stronger. And yes, I've lost from the cold damage. You can see remnants of it here. I've lost this leaf right here and the leaf in the back right there. They went relatively quickly. So for the moment, I have my staging area right here. Cousin It is chilling out over here, get some real good morning sun. And a lot of the leaves with the cold damage are a little bit <laughs> over here. And I've been picking out as they die off. So he's getting quite the aeration. He doesn't look as full as he used to, but that's actually okay because he's extremely compact. So a little bit of aeration around the leaf, it's not such a bad thing. I would, I would prefer, of course, for that not to have happened, but he's forgiving me. I've still got so, so many blooms. Such a trooper, I swear. Let me get rid of this old bloom right in there. Alrighty, down here I have some dendrobium cakeys and my little kingianum cakey pot as well. Everything looking fabulous over here. While the sun is behind a cloud, this is the west side now. And well, here on the west side, I've got everybody that likes a lot of light. But again, sun being a little bit stronger, I'm loath to put my mirror kafilas into direct sun. They were hardening off throughout the winter, but this sun is already a lot different. Only three Ancelia Africanas at the top because Buffalo crossed with Leo is indoors and I'm hoping that the buds are not going to blast with me opening the terrace door constantly. So I got my Citrina over here. She could do with a little bit more light now, but I want her close to the terrace door because I still have to bring her inside. And my Encyclia Garciana Alba down here on her second flush of blooms and still more buds to come. What a performer and what a fragrance in this corner because of her. Just gorgeous. And I've got King down here. Hello, everybody. Say hello. Do you want to say hello to everybody? Hi. Yeah, I know. So those eyes, sending you a hug with those eyes. All right, you're going to help me get up? <laughs> you're going to help me get up? Not much activity on my Vanderpole here with the Chao Praia and the Papilio Nante. But looking marvelous. I'm really hoping for some roots up here this season. Maybe I can cut this top part off and propagate it. Not much activity. I'm trying to get the roots to reactivate, start growing again. Maybe a bit too soon. Maybe it doesn't trust the warmer temperatures either. Now our night, night temperatures are still going down to 12 degrees Celsius, whereas I have had temperatures that were 14 degrees Celsius. And some of these orchids stayed outside for the night. But now some of them come in and then I make a decision who stays outside. The purparatas can stay outside because it is nice and warm during the day for them, they can warm up again. One thing I'm concerned about is this right here. That's bothering me immensely. I hope it's not the dreaded V. We shall see if she blooms or not. This is a gorgeous sheath that was forming throughout the winter. Don't know if she's going to bloom, but I'm leaving my purparatas outside. My V confirmed, confirmed because of years of watching the behavior of this orchid, this is a virus confirmed orchid. This is the CG Roebling. It's starting a new growth at the base of the one lead. Nothing, no activity at the base of the other. She has been outside all winter long. I don't see any damage on her that wasn't there before. So this is just a little bit concerning. Yeah, I don't like that one bit. Anyway, watch and observe is all I can say. And then in the middle shelf, <laughs> Joy, I can get rid of the hair, a bit impromptu, Joy, Lelia Harpophila. My Hibikis, both of my Hibikis here are doing great. They can stay outside as long as the temperatures are 12 degrees Celsius. 
One of them is starting a fourth new growth, and the other growths, when we did the repotting, they are starting to push roots. Love, love, love. Something that I find pretty amazing as well, here's the epidendrum I got from Yinzu Orchids and ADD. And so this is the keiki that is growing from the piece that I got. It was this new growth starting, and that's this keiki, and it's grown beautifully. Look what it's doing now. <laughs> I haven't had this orchid a year, but I'm like, okay, are you, are you a spike? Seeing as I've never grown one of these, it's just getting longer and longer, but there are no leaves. These, I just know that they're bigger, taller, more lanky, and then they grow a spike. So I'd be very surprised if this is already spiking, but you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> and then we have our random orchids here in the back where some of them come inside. This is my white bridal, beautiful new growth. Wish it could be a bit more chunkier. And then I have my velotina right here. Ooh, growing new roots. That is what I like to see. And also my tenua here is extending the root system. Uh, got a beautiful root right back there behind the tag. <laughs> so at least this one is not faring too badly. I was a bit concerned with these little ones. I can't see any activity here in the sheath of my Cattleya Zip, but it's doing okay. My Luminosa, not so much. Lost all the leaves in the back here during the winter, so not looking good for the Luminosa, but hopefully with the next growth we can get some recovery going before the next winter hits. My Demophorcus Lowii is holding on beautifully, and that new root that is growing nicely into the media, ooh, I'm loving it. My Lobata is looking fantastic considering this growth was grown through the winter. So that's very, very comforting to see, to be honest. And then my Pocket Lover is also busy with two new growths at the base, which are difficult to see. But it's great because there's a new growth that is sort of developing and progressing. January it started, but now we're getting some other new growths at the base, which I'm very happy for. Hopefully this orchid can establish herself in the summer of 2023. And my Patricia von Bruyenbrook here, doing the same thing she did last year. So I have a spike, and I have another spike, but these are not amounting to anything, and I hope that the backlight isn't too bad. You can see nothing is going to come from those. But I have a spike down here, where yes, I can see some buds forming. And I'm hoping that at least maybe one of them will make it. Now, I bring her in and out. So, you know what it is. With an orchid that is in bud and you keep bringing them in and out, that's why my Ancelia stays indoors. But this orchid needs to recover, establish herself. She got the media change, everything, last year. So if she blooms, one bloom, that'd be great to be able to document it. Other than that, I'm not too fussed. Just let her grow and get stronger in that pot. What I'm really chuffed about here is my Leopoldii. Hey, this growth is doing beautifully and behaving, growing towards the light and sort of back into the pot. My nobly Cooksoni Anum over here. Yep, this was one of the ones that got munched. Buds were munched. We're going to lose six blooms that would have otherwise bloomed. So this one, at least we have the buds in the back there intact. And two more, if you can see that through the cane, looking gorgeous. So we saved ourselves some blooms. Unfortunately, we have to subtract six. However, already starting on a new growth. That is great. The first new growth of the season. And just open yesterday, the first blooms of my Dendrobium nobili no ID complex hybrid. I'm telling you, this corner right now is just like heady, heady, gorgeous fragrance. The Dendrobium Berry Oda. I am trying to stay in control of the aphids. I think I'm going to buy myself a Calendula plant, pot it up in a pot and see if I can't just have that one as a host plant for aphids. See if that will help. It's too late for the Berry Oda now, but you know, I keep picking away, trying to make sure that I somewhat save the blooms a little bit. A little bit longer for our pleasure. 
But yeah, this whole corner now is just a gorgeous mix of honeysuckle, molasses, and freesia. Beautiful. We're not going to get as big a spectacle as we did last year when it comes to blooms, but I've got some spikes forming randomly on the canes that did bloom for us. Now this year we're going to get a little bit less of blooms, but we can see that spikes are forming. I have some more back here. Don't want to be fishing around too much because, you know, it may just pop a spike off. So there are some more back in that foliage, but she's already starting on a new growth. Let me see that I get this in shot. Anyway, there's <laughs> the first new growth coming. That's great. Full on fertilizer is going to happen as from tomorrow because I only just discovered that new growth today. My fantastically grown anosmum is right here, is losing the main cane that it came with. <clears throat> We'll just have to wait and see what she does to this year. <laughs> High hopes now that she is in self-watering. And if my dog would just move out of the corner, or maybe not. Here's my Uncle Yathea Pink Dreamer. Ha ha! Beautiful spikes. And there I also have to be very careful because I don't want aphids in those teeny tiny blooms. But yes, I got gorgeous spikes. So happy to see this. What a reliable bloomer. Super pleased. I brought out my Lelia Londii just to make sure that I don't miss out on treating her for scale and for mealybugs. Because now that she's full on in active growth, you see the damage here from some mealybugs. Yeah, I don't want any growth to be taken out. She's a very sweet orchid, clearly, when in active growth. Anywho. Up here, polyanthum dropping its leaves, true to form. Then Sonia is still fast asleep. I was thinking maybe something would have cracked at the canes by the time I walk you through my blooming alley. Nope. My unicum, however, by contrast, is right here. And there are little nodes coming. So we'll have some blooms should everything go according to plan. And hopefully this year I get two new growths. Hmm. We'll see what goes on. My ever, ever faithful Exile doing fabulously. Look at that. Look at that. Growing new little growths everywhere now. Sorry about the background noise. See that? Oh, beautiful. This orchid now has got its mojo. Very pleased. Then down to my Tulumnia Hoxonia. Look at that. All these new little growths everywhere. And the roots in the back. <laughs> greening up, greening up. Love it. Absolutely love it. Got to be careful. Don't want it to be bashing. The only reason this orchid is here right now is because there is no wind. Otherwise, she would be back with Stan the Man because there I can at least protect the roots in the back from any of the elements bashing her against something. So looking good, looking good. Maybe one day we should consider cutting them out in half. <laughs> yeah, so all in all, oh, just one more thing. My zygopetalum spike is developing beautifully. That's coming along nicely. And all the other ones in the back here, they're doing quite well as well. I'm kind of always looking towards my Krista Erdman and I think I'm seeing something popping out of a nubbin. Oh goodness, now the screen is a little small. There is a nubbin and I've been looking every single day for a nubbin because that would indicate a spike. Now we have to keep watching to make sure we don't miss it. Let me just pull her down. Let's have a closer look. It's gonna be a show. Because I really have been looking every day, it's about this time of year. Maybe she should have bloomed, but last year she stayed indoors all winter. This year I kept her outdoors all winter, so of course things are a little bit more delayed. But I see three nubbins. One, two, three. So that is superb. Now 
this is going to happen very, very quickly. That is awesome because those beautiful sparkly white blooms, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing more of them and in more spikes instead of the one I had last year. This is great. I better leave her out here because she needs some water. As a visual reminder, turn her towards the light so that we don't confuse her. There we go. The light being to the right of me because of the white facade. Woohoo! I'm glad we took her down. Yeah, she needs some water. Brassavola flagellaris or Brassavola perinii or I'm not entirely sure anymore. Until this orchid doesn't bloom, I'm not entirely sure. I think this is a, this is a flagellaris. I cannot be 100% sure anymore. But as the roots were starting to absorb water, the roots of last year, I'm like, hello, there has got to be a new growth somewhere because this orchid only starts using her roots from the previous season when in active growth. And here we are. Even if I can't see it straight away, if the roots start functioning, something is going on with this orchid and sure and true to form. So maybe this is the Perinii and this could be the Flagellaris. I have no idea, but we'll see. This is my zombie Brassavola. <laughs> it was only a rhizome when it went on this mount as an experiment, but ta-da, it grew four new growths and is starting to look a little bit more like a proper orchid. We'll see what it does this season. And then I'm just gonna finish off here with the most spectacular cane and angles. Look at all the nubbins of my Dendrobium of Film on this single cane. This is gonna be magnifique. So excited. And they are everywhere. All the little bumps are now starting to show. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is the start of spring for me. <laughs> The other ones here, they didn't fare so well. Ceratellarium didn't fare so well with the cold temperatures, defoliated, oh well. As long as the orchid is alive, I've also treated against any kind of pests. The little, I would say aphids, but they weren't aphids, really weird little things last season. So all the canes have been treated. Seeing as the leaves have come off, I wasn't too fussed anymore about putting garlic alcohol on the dendrobium. But this, yeah, this is all cold damage. Oh well, Hakuna Matata. Like I said, at least she's alive. Just checking. <laughs> it's too soon. It's too soon. But this is awesome. Fabulous. Oh, let me turn around the corner as well because it's happening on the keiki, the monster mount as well. Lots and lots of nubbins happening on those canes. All the ones that grew last year, yes, even though they're not long, they've got nubbins. Should be interesting, should be a very interesting season. And oh yes, you can see, sorry, I'm keeping you longer than I was hoping to do. <laughs> but you can see I'm already moving canes away from where the nubbins are. I don't want any wind bashing against what's coming out. You see this cane right here and how close together they are. This nubbin is in danger of getting lost. So I may have to tie something else there. You know what I mean? We just have to preserve every single spike that is going to form, which I will do right after I've said goodbye to you. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. Live in la vida. I hope that you enjoyed this impromptu video, a little tour of the patio after we did the cleanup. If you've stayed to the end, thank you so, so very much for watching. Well, <laughs> we get a stretch from Siliano. If he can come out tomorrow, then he's going to get a bath and I bet he's going to be absolutely loving it. But not now. He's in the shade. Not a good thing. I don't want him to get a cold this late in the game. We've been doing so well so far. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though. Thank you. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.